Good morning, you guys. Make sure you get comfortable. You gotta pause this video now. Go on, grab your hot cider and some little cookies because cause it's about to get serious. About to get serious. But no, for real, you guys, I am so genuinely excited for this video. Why would I say this? Because we worked hard to get to this point. If you know, you know. We worked very hard to get to this point. So, I'm just very excited for this video. Um, and first off, I want to start by saying and reminding you all of the verse um, that talks about us being aliens to this world. Um, us being the salt and the light of this world. So as we walk into this season, I want us to keep that in mind. And anytime that was thinking about something and I'm having childlike faith, I don't want you all to get discouraged. I don't want you all to get confused because that's not what a true believer would do, okay? I want you guys to take it um, with genuine faith and accepting the fact that yes, we may have child in the world. But fear not because Jesus has overcome the world. Amen. So I did take some notes for this video. Um, I will be sharing some of those notes with you guys. I hate it out way too long. Um. I brought all of these props today, <laughs> but I really didn't want to overwhelm myself. But let me get my notes out because we're going to need them. All right. The best combination, by the way, Nutter Butters and Apple Cider is crazy. All right. So here on my notes, I'm just going to start by opening with this because um, my mind tends to like get distracted. So I just want to start off with a straightforward point. So, dwelling and walking in the Holy Spirit, right? So we know this is the title of the video. Um, and so... This is when we're most happiest. This is where we're going to see full life. And yes, you may not be perfect right now, right? But God says, come as you are. And so what God was showing me and why, I wanted, why he wanted me to share this with you guys was because so many Christians have been have been looking to other things to fulfill them and it's not gonna work if you want to constantly be walking with god you are going to have to use the helper that he gave us and that's another thing as i refer to god and notice that i will Um, notice that I will sometimes, you know, if I mention, if I just say God and I may be talking about Jesus, but notice that as well. So <clears throat> the whole reason for the foot picture, right? The whole reason, um, well, I did my feet yesterday and I was so happy because it took me a lot to do it. It took me a lot to get up and say, okay, well, I'm going to eat a piece of candy. I'm going to get my energy and I'm just going to go for this thing, right? I was procrastinating it for so long because I was just like, I'm not worthy. And so God said his son was so prophetic was coming out of this because when you put your effort into following the Holy Spirit, walking with the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to mold and complete you in Christ, right? When you put your efforts into this, heaven on earth is given heaven on earth. And so this was 
this is why this was such a big deal um and dwelling and walking in the holy spirit when we give god our our highest self this is when we'll begin to see our foundation prosper and what i mean by this is when we put our trust in the lord he will begin to build us up it may start with your feet right so they always say this real women know to even keep their feet down in the winter time i know it's kind of silly but it's it's, got, it's showing metaphor so There's a reason that Jesus always, that the that in Jesus' time, that the valuable thing to do was, um, the honorable thing to do was to wash someone's feet. Okay? There's a reason for this. Um, and there's also a reason that there's the story about the lady that washed his feet with her tears and her hair. All right? And so this is really what we're here to talk about today. Um, the sacrifice that it does take to, to follow the Lord, the sacrifice, because when you're walking by faith and not by sight, this is what upsets the, the devil the most. Because this is what moves the biggest mountains. And so... So yeah, <clears throat> dwelling and walking in the Holy Spirit. All right. Um, had I not took my instinct and said, "I'm tired of not having my I'm having my nails painted. I'm tired of not of not feeling um, confident in my walk." Mm, that's powerful. But then I would not have got it done. So first of all, I would say that we need to recognize our need. Um, so the way that I recognized my need for dwelling and walking in the Holy Spirit was I literally I hope this didn't melt my cup. It tastes kind of funny. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> but literally, I was experiencing every kind of abuse. Um, And so it was basically, I, I don't want to turn this into a story about me, but it was basically the breakdown that brought me my breakthrough. So everyone's anointing is different, right? Um, so what may be the situation for me would maybe not be the situation for you. So to me, my relationship with God was the most important thing to me. Um, I had a lot of people around did not feel the same way. I would I would notice when I would like try to like talk to them about God, when I would ask them questions, they really would like be Christian, but they wouldn't really be presently there with it and i'm not trying to bash anyone i'm just saying so for me that was um that was what made the my breakdown that's what made it most difficult and literally the abuse that i was going through every kind of abuse um and it was that i was I was trying to stay focused on God. I was trying to I was trying to abide. I was trying to do what I felt God wanted me to do. I was trying to do the right thing. You know, we've all been through this. And um so I was trying to do the right thing. 
but time after time it would just it would just keep pulling me down keep pulling me down keep pulling me down but i had a, i had a nudge by the holy spirit that's telling me that's telling me you don't need this in your life you don't need this in your life and so i think god was showing me how to deal with something how to do away with something how to execute something and it showed me a lot of strength um which we should fight the good fight of faith as soldiers be good soldiers of jesus christ but I think I was really building my strength up at that time. Showing me that I don't need to build you up. I don't need to make you strong. But I'm doing this because I love you. And that spoke volumes. So as I felt like my life was being torn apart, it was really an opportunity to make me stronger. And so it was through that that I said, um, I said, well, the Holy Spirit is the only thing that is that has helped me in this situation. And the Holy Spirit will be giving me instructions that at this at the time I was like, that is crazy. I can't see without it. But once I started to heal, once I started to get get more into um opening my eyes and seeing why am I dealing with this? What what brokenness is allowing this in me? So um once I started to realize that. That was when I said, okay, I can start breaking away. And this is when I said, okay, I'm going to walk and trust in the Holy Spirit. And so this was very much a symbol. Um, the feet picture was very much a symbol. Of how of how great our foundation can be when we put it in the right hands. I had to have willing hands to paint my nails. I had to. Just like you gotta have willing hands to put your life in the right hands. To allow God to mold you, to allow the Holy Spirit to complete you in Christ, right? And so Jesus always talked about, um, well, several times I remember verses about the Holy Spirit being our helper. Um, if he didn't leave, then God would not be over us in the Holy Spirit and things like this, right? And so, our helper. Um, and so, mimicking Jesus. So when mimicking Jesus, Jesus was God in the flesh, right? So I feel this is equivalent if we dwell in the Holy Spirit, if we're allowing God to completely guide our lives. If we, once you attach yourself to that and you continue to build that bond and build that bond and build that bond, it's going to be harder and harder to break. Just like when you resist the devil, he will flee. When you come near to God, he will come near to you. And so and building your relationship. I don't want to say that God ever leaves us, but building our relationship and gaining that favor from the Lord. Amen. So the next thing is exploring your anointing. So it's only through the Holy Spirit that you can explore your anointing, that you can be built in Christ. And I really like to watch Joseph Prince on um on the TV. And I love him. He's a great he's a great um he's a great preacher. But he was saying about, um, you know, completely focusing on Jesus. And this is great, but this is also kind of an Old Testament way of thinking because it is not by our own words, by, but by God's grace so that we may not boast, right? And so just reminding ourselves that we always need the Holy Spirit and being true to ourselves excuse me knowing without the holy spirit i i tend to have these thoughts i tend to go these ways i tend to feel this pain 
and being honest with yourself if you're not happy in that situation be honest with yourself stop lying to yourself because god does have something better and i promise you this right now in jesus name and so exploring your anointing so the next thing that i was seeing um i started to see the roles of man and woman has been very evident right throughout the whole bible and women are supposed to wear this veil women are supposed to be ladylike and this is how i see the veil and so The one verse that says, it'd be better than your head will be shaved than to not wear your veil. So am I, if I'm out here acting reckless, doing crazy things, and I'm like just flying my hair, God says it would be better to shave your head than for you to act that way. Right? So that's my take on that. You guys can leave your comments below at any time. And always, um, you know, question, debate. We can discuss, all right? Any time. So the thing that I was looking at since we have the roles of man and woman, since women are literally to help, you know, your man, um, to help their household, to bring honor to the household, to bring to um, bring wisdom to your husband, then we should also have someone that we can look to, right? The reason I noticed this was because a woman going up to a man and acting like Jesus, yes, we should be kind. Yes, we should be the light and salt of the world still. But a woman just should have come to a man, like, if I just should have come up to an old man and I'm like, hey, not, like I said, I'm never trying to judge, but I'm always just, you know, learning from things. So if I come up to a man, I'm just like, just like, hey, God's gonna bless you today. You're gonna do great things in life. Like, I just think that you are so anointed. He's probably gonna be like, lady like you're acting crazy like this like i don't like i don't feel comfortable that this lady just came up to me told totally, like are you like are you trying to be my wife like what's going on here so this is where i am being honest beyond how i've seen in the church beyond what i've seen in the church and i think this is revival i think this is revelation that the lord is sending for people amen so i think that do you guys think all right so should this is how i wrote it should the life of mary and jesus be taught together and i think if we did a study yes jesus was carrying like this how did mary carry it the whole time what was mary doing because mary was wise right and so what so what role did mary play because we know that jesus needed mary at some times so what role did she play in that? Um, how can we learn to be good helpers as well as women? And I know I already did my, my, my video on virtuous women. This is not what this is leading to, but this was just one of my notes. So if a man leaves his family and clings to his wife, you know, then like I was saying, yes. So Mary was, Mary is very much um, Jesus' helper while he's at home, right? Our mother helps us to do so much. Our mother does so good for our household, right? So in a sense, we can say that we can learn from Mary so much about being a wife and about being a mother, right? Um, and these are desires that a godly woman should have. A woman that's focused on God, a woman that is in her prime, a woman that is focused on the Holy Spirit, a woman that is exploring her anointing. She wants to have her family. 
She wants to have her family. Um, she wants to have her, her man. She wants her, her family to prosper. And these are qualities of a godly or virtuous woman. All right. Um, she knows that this is where her value in her life begins to manifest, begins to prosper, right? So I think that we have so much to learn from Mary. Um, so dealing with dealing with the situation of dealing with abuse at the maximum, I had to I had to learn um, to be wise about things, right? And so this is where I started to learn some things that I couldn't just. Um, I couldn't act as I couldn't act as a man in the situation. I couldn't um I know Jesus would Jesus would come up and Jesus will say, Well Jesus would be very upfront about it, very confrontational about it. But being a woman, being um being a helper and Christ being the head right i said i know god is at work i trust god at work i trust that sovereignty and so i'm gonna do my best to be that little voice of wisdom that little guidance right um and maybe that can even help you later on in life but right now as a woman i need to be protected i need to be um i'm fragile i need to be i need to be safe i need to be I need to be covered and um so this is where i started to say okay well i need wisdom and yes the holy spirit did help right but also it's so good to have that image and to be able to look at mary's example and say wow so mary wow and this is a perfect example while Jesus is being taken up on the cross and Mary, she's just there. She's exploring so much pain. But the way that she explores her pain and the way Jesus goes in the temple and turns all the tables upside down is not the same. It's not the same. Because women have such a close relationship with God. And I have I heard this before on the TV, I think. But talking about how your wife is so, so much a treasure to you. We need more virtuous women because so many men have been missing out of this and then we wonder why they're going out here, why they're um, doing all these terrible things that we see in the world, to be honest. Because they have no safe haven. They have no one to cling to. There's not very, there's not very virtuous women in this world, let's be honest. Like what woman is really gonna um, stand up and what woman really has the place right now to be able to speak to her man and say, say, babe, I don't like how your job is treating you. I don't like what you're dealing. Let's fix, let's change this. Let's fix this. You should change your work, your coworkers. You should change your workspace because this is not good for you. Babe, what can I do to help you? We don't really have this. And so, <clears throat> what I'm trying to say with this is that as long as we play a huge role, but it's from a different perspective. It's from a different. It's from a different um, point of view. And so, looking at Mary, and her prayers being so powerful, even in the Bible it says that if you, if you're, um, if a woman is confiding in you, and you're not, and you keep letting her down, then your prayers are going to be hindered. Because a woman, see, you're, as you're submitting to a man. As you are um, helping a man to build, helping to build up a man, 
as you are really confiding in this man, you are agreeing that you want to be part of his household. So you are agreeing to accept anything that's coming into that household. That's why we need to be very careful who we submit to. And me, myself, and I, even when I found myself in the abusive situation, I was always checking it with my relationship with God. And I was saying, oh, this doesn't seem right. And I would do this as well. Um, I had a boyfriend, my first boyfriend in high school. Um, and I had the same experience with him. And it was really the only... You know, these were the two relationships that I ever took really serious. All right. The others, I would never, any other relationship between that time, I never really, um, I would never really even get to a point of saying, all right, am I going to give myself to you? Am I going to give myself, am I going to give myself? I wouldn't really get to this point because I, it was out of the question. You understand what I'm saying? So these were two relationships that I actually really was, I really loved the man. I really was in, you know, whatever, you know, that little fairy tale story that y'all be hearing. And so, yeah. Um, but yeah, we need virtuous women. And so as I was dealing with that abuse, um, and I was seeing that and you will get to a certain point where, like I said, you resisted that when he will flee. And this is so much on a spiritual level as well because they could stop bothering you before you even leave that town. God's building you up while you're still there. Okay, God is preparing you to leave. God is going to not go out without a bang, right? But God is going to send you on the road with so many blessings. And that's for somebody. But I think that I would see Mary almost as this, you know, maybe I'm just thinking, but I think I would almost see Mary as the feet of the church. Um, she is the grand helper, right? And Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. But I would almost see Mary as a feet because as a woman taking that position of humility, giving yourself to your man's household, to, to build up your man's household, right? So when you truly, when you choose as a wise woman, when you say with your wisdom, when you give your true entire self, right? Some of us have cut off our wisdom, some of us have cut off our emotions, some of us don't, don't show that. But when you are actually in that, when you actually choose, when you actually decide, to submit to that man and to add to his household, right? You're taking such a position of humility. You're saying, I do fear you as I fear God. I do, I do respect you as I respect God. I do want to submit to you because I see that the Holy Spirit has placed me here for you. I, I see that God has preordained us to be together. I see that the Holy Spirit is giving me full and total confirmation. Because the thing about walking in the Holy Spirit is that it's never going to take away from us, but it's always gonna add to us. See, that's why the Holy Spirit is called our helper. And so the same way that I see that Mary is the church's helper. And taking such a humble position, right? And so, of course, men can look at it. They can say, well, yes, I want a wife like this. That's so great. But this is mainly for, for women to see, well, how can I be? How can I be like Mary? How can I be more wise? How can I be more um, ladylike? How can I... Hmm, how can I be... How can I be a better help? You know, these things like this. And so, this is why I've chose to really focus on this recently. Because seeing the lack of virtuous women in the world, and I'm saying, well, what more is it to What more is it to this? And of course, the church isn't really going to bring this up. 
because the churches really, you know, men are basically running the churches majority of the time. So they're not going to speak against their own church and say, yeah, well, actually, I think that we're actually, we need to merge as women. Like, this is not going too great. Like, yikes, I think that you could do something better, babe. I need your wisdom. I need your input. You know, men are not really going to down their own church. And so this is why I'm, this is why I'm coming out about this. This is why I'm speaking on this. And I really think that by looking at Mary, we can, we can have a lot more virtuous women in this, um, in this world. And so back to the analogy, um, we can kind of see women as the foundation of family um, because women are really the glue to the family atmosphere, right? Women really allow that family atmosphere. Once you submit to that man, once you give him actually your, once you hand your heart over to him, once you fully entrust him with your heart, you are, you are accepting this man as your husband, truly in your heart. And so, sorry, y'all. But yeah, you are really becoming, you're really get, becoming his new foundation, right? He already had his mother as his foundation before, or his family, you know, his parents. But, yeah, his parents, because he has to learn from both of them, you know, before he leaves. And once he's ready to leave, once he um, is ready to join with his wife, you know, this man should be able to, um, you know, he should have enough intake from his father, enough intake from his mother. He should say, yes, I'm ready for marriage. I'm going to go cling to my wife. And then, um, you know, build that for his own. And the thing is, yes, he should already be grown into a man, right? And there's this reminds me of that verse where it says, um, you know, when I was a man, I, I let go of the former things of being a child. Um, and this reminds me so much of this because it takes commitment from the man and the woman to... Um, to come together in marriage, right? You can't have a one-sided marriage. It just doesn't exist. It has to be a mutual agreement. So this is why narcissistic abuse and abusive relationships cannot last because there was never the real foundation, right? God never really ordained that to happen because had God brought you together with your spouse, best believe he would make sure that the setup was there. Um, so yeah, I think that Mary identifies so well with our feet, with our feet. Um, I really do. And I know it sounds weird. I know it sounds strange, but I really do think so. And I think if we look more at Mary's perspective, I think that we could have more virtuous women in society. I think that the world could begin to change. I think that men could be come more encouraged but i also think it's going to take initiative of women to stand up and just like eve took that apple it's also going to take eve to to throw the apple into the ocean to say or pomegranate into the ocean to say hey we don't we don't want this we don't need this hey hey and en enmity i see you all in the world i see you terrorizing my people and we don't want this no more but yes, I think that Mary identifies so well with our feet because when you have that virtuous woman, when you have that foundation, that good foundation, your family is not going to fumble. And I know this is kind of a hard, hold on y'all, one second, I have to get a lighter. I 
I know in a world full of money and material, it may be hard to accept this. It may be hard to say, well, ding, so she really wasn't down for me. She was using me for money. She really wasn't there like that. I know it's a hard pill to swallow. Because I had to accept that too. I, and that was, you know, a very hard thing for me to accept in the abusive relationship was that we were never really married if you didn't do your part in the commitment. This was just a delusion, <laughs> literally a delusion in my head. And so when your foundation is good, they will follow the head. So let me repeat that again because this is included in what I said previously. Because just because you're, well, see, I had very good intentions at first, but it didn't follow through because it was not, um, I quickly realized what it really was. But yeah, so take this with in consideration in the context, right? So when your foundation is good, the head will be the head will be secured right so when your foundation is good you don't have to fear that you're gonna fall and bust your head open right you don't have to fear that so a good godly man a man that has his heart after god a man that wants to walk like jesus a man that is um seeking the holy spirit a man that is spending time with the Lord, a man that is, a man that knows better, right? A man that is trying to do better, right? A man that cares about what he does in his life, right? And so, even when I met my kingdom spouse, I was like, God, you are not telling me to work with this thing. Like, that's crazy. But over time, I've seen God do work in both of us and prepare us both for, for this thing. And not saying that we were completely wrong because the world that we was in, you know, products of our environments, right? Um, and not only, not saying that that had changed the person that God made us to be, that had changed the anointing, but just saying that some things had attached themselves, right? And because we didn't know our full purpose, we allowed it. So there was a process where God was breaking those things off. And the beautiful thing is, is that in that process, I see God building not only up for the marriage, but up for a friendship, right? Up for a relationship, right? Because equality, right? And so every part of the body of Christ is important. So don't think that because I'm saying the feet that it's, that it's in a bad way. Because yes, we're at the sides because we're equal. Not with the head, not with the tail, or not with the feet. Because, you know, yes, yes. But, yes, still equal. But in the body of Christ, I'm saying symbolically. What, what part are we helping with? What part are we functioning? Right? And so this is why I truly do see that we need that we need those helpers right there, right? Because without the feet, the, the head can't move. <laughs> without the feet, the head can't move. And yeah. I was very excited to make this video, y'all. I really was. Um, and I feel such revelation in it. And I just want to say, first of all, if you watched the other two seasons, thank you so much for your support. Um, this is the season called Completion in Christ. Um, in this video, yeah, it's really about exploring anointing. All right exploring anointing and so the mimicking jesus part right 
as wives or as Mary looking at Jesus, right? Um, as being a helper, as being a woman in our nature, right? But Mary looked so much up to Jesus. And a man should be able to, I know this sounds weird, okay? Don't don't cringe in my comments <laughs> or do whatever. But I know this may sound weird, but a man should be able to trust his wife just as much as he trusts his mother, right? If not more, because they've gone through more together because they're gonna be more intimate. But, A man is built up first by his mother, right? A man is built up first by his parents and then set off to his wife. So the fact, mimicking Jesus. So Mary though, she would literally, this is, it's just the idea of a godly man, how, how a virtuous woman would look at a godly man. So she would literally just, you know, she was so consumed by Jesus, even when he was taking up his cross, my God, even when he was taking up his cross, you guys, and she just sat there and she was in agony she was in pain but she said my god you are great what do you what do you need me to do <laughs> do you need me to walk all the way to talk to you do you need me to sit there the, the entire time while they're doing this what do you need me to do and so maybe not so much mimicking jesus But just like, just valuing, looking up to him, right? And, and saying, wow, I admire you so much. And he looks back and he says, I adore you so much. I don't have this. I don't really have this anywhere else. And this is how you should look at your spouse because if you're with the right person that God literally ordained you to be with, that's how it will be. And so I think y'all are starting to get the, the analogy. I would I literally keep lying this and have not even hit it and it's just smoking like on its own. But yeah, I think you guys are beginning to see the analogy. But anyways, you all, my son is up. Um, the herbs are the healing of the nation. So for all of you that are being religious, hypocrites, that need healing but are judging me because I'm getting my... So, yeah. But I think that that was it for this video. I think I explained everything pretty well. It seems like the perfect timing. But remember to dwell in your Holy Spirit, to dwell in the Holy Spirit, and remember that this is how you will explore your anointing. And this is how you will become more like God. And the thing is, women can become more like God as well, right? But we do it in a different way. We do it in a different way. Virtuous women. Yes, virtuous women. The way that Mary approached. Virtuous women do it in a different day, in a different way. So as Mary's looking at Jesus... Right, and she's saying, wow, he suffered, da, da, da. But she's not saying, wow, so take me next. No, she's not saying that. She's saying, she's saying, wow, I need to, I need to do this on my level for my family, right? I need to make sure I'm fulfilling my spot. I need to make sure that I'm being a good helper, right? Because like I said, the, the head can't go anywhere if it's not being carried by the feet. And so that's why it's so equal because they're so equally powerful, right? Um, but at the same time, they're playing, they're playing different roles. And so it's so important that those roles are in place and that people are, that when people are coming together for marriage, that it's for kingdom marriage and that we're coming together knowing what God is putting there, what the Holy Spirit has anointed that for. And that both of you are in your roles because that's the only way that you're going to see fruit. Right? And if you're not abiding in the vine, you're not going to get any fruit. So, 
dwelling in the Holy Spirit, you all. And like I said, so I started doing this um, probably about like a year or two ago. I started waking up every day and I just say, God, help me to join your Holy Spirit today. Help me to abide by, or, um, you know, stay in your will today. Help me to do all that you need me to do. I want, I truly had to seek the face of God because like I said, um, I don't know if I've uploaded this video, but I had said before, like, literally, I... I was so terrified that because my relationship with God was being taken away. But Jesus has did the same, you know? Jesus said on the cross, he said, why have you, for, why have you forsaken me? But it wasn't. It was God doing something bigger. And so, as God was making me strong into a virtuous woman, right? But, he was, but I was also having to lose having to feel abandoned for a second but God says it is because I was showing you I was showing you what happens when you cast your pearls to swine because you have to go out and tell people leave these swine alone leave them alone be pearls be in your naturalness okay don't don't mess with this no more all right you guys but at this point I don't want to babble I need to get my son's drink my blood is smoking itself but I love you guys so, so much, and I hope you're staying blessed. Thank you for tuning in. And once again, I'm so excited for this um, Dates with God season. This is the third and last season. Um, for the longest time, I just want to share a quick testimony. I know this was a very long episode, but I, I hope, you know, my real ones, comment, put a cross below. Put a cross below, that little purple cross emoji. Put it below, or, you know, put a lamb, put a lion. Put a lion even better okay put a lion below if you stay through to the end but yeah i really wanted to share my spiritual journey with you guys i didn't know how to i thought i was gonna write a book but i was like oh that's gonna be so tedious like how i'm gonna do that this was a long process and long and like agonizing process like it was very hard it was very painful i was like god how am i going to put this in a book like I'm, that's crazy and then I realized that literally I was seeing my spiritual journey over these Dance with God episodes. And so that's when I was like, my last one was intimacy with God. My first one was really me getting into my relationship with God. Um, and this was all through this abusive relationship, right? But this was really when I had my son that I started my YouTube channel. Because it was really when I started to open my eyes to it. And God began to work it out of me. So that's why it was still a process and an orderly process, right? And this is why I noticed that so many things in the world, right? Everything has a center to it, right? We have brains. Flowers have um, the center part. So many things, like the earth has a core. Like, so understanding that there is order, that God does want good for us, that God has set things up how we, in a way that we can pursue him, right? And not saying that we're perfect, not saying it's going to be an easy path, right? But that we can still pursue him. And with the Holy Spirit, it's so much easier. We don't realize all the help that we have the Holy Spirit. We should be embracing this. We should be cheering for joy with this, right? The body of Christ should be standing up and seeing its authority. But literally, you guys, yeah, I started to look and I said, oh, intimacy with God. I said, okay, so the first one is really about like um, salvation. That was when I really realized the salvation that God had on my life. And I was saying, God, like, please don't strike me down because why am i in this why do i feel like i'm getting farther away from you i don't want to lose this for a relationship but everything kept drawing me back to there and god says because i'm building your strength god says i know you don't want to be in the world i know the world sucks i know the devil is ignorant but i'm building your strength i'm allowing your anointing to manifest i'm allowing your your butt your seed to prosper i'm allowing your flower to blossom and so Yes, this is the third season, and this season is completion in Christ. And this is why I say exploring your anointing. Exploring your anointing. Because once you've built up, once you've healed, once you have reached your completion in Christ, this is when it becomes the fun part. And God says this season is going to be crazy. The relaxation is going to be crazy. The enjoyment is going to be crazy. I was watching Jordan's journey. I love, I absolutely love her channel. Um, I'm not going to sell Tiger Blue because I always forget to do that. I know you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Take notes. Take notes. A good steward. If you go to church and you're taking notes, automatically you're on the checklist. 
automatically on the checklist they're they're already setting up their appointment to call you <laughs> but for real like um seriously <coughs> I was watching Jordan's <laughs> journey and she was saying how we're walking into the season of our promises. And I love since her word is always very raw. And it may not it may always be it may kind of be hard to accept, but it's always very raw. And I really appreciate that about her because sometimes I'll feel the nudge, but I won't say, hey, this is the nudge. So that was another thing God was showing me yesterday was about using our words and making the confirmations, making the claims, right? But not doing it for our own glory. And that was one thing God showed me this morning was not for my glory, Lord. Because every time I notice that, I get excited. I say, oh, the promise is here. The promise is here. Oh, Lily is doing her dance. But God said, no, Lily. And every time he would shut me down, I didn't understand why. And so this morning I seen, all right, mommy's about to get milk. I seen this morning and I said, oh, oh, I just tried to take, cap I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the captain of the ship. My bad. My B. And I said, okay, God, I'm sorry. This is for you. This is for your glory. I should get so excited for the things that, that the world is about to see about you. And so, yeah, completion of Christ, exploring the anointing. Um, with exploring that anointing, I just pray in Jesus' mighty name that we would all be so content and so grateful for our anointings, right? And so, yes, and Jordan's journey, she was saying, I'm so sorry, you guys, like I said, I get distracted. I just get so excited and I talk, like, every direction. <laughs> but literally, she was saying how we're in this season, we're walking into our promises and we'll be experiencing a lot of enjoyment. So I want you guys to get ready for this, but also you need to take heed to this video. You need to take heed to the word of God. You need to take heed to what God is doing in your life. You need to take heed to God's people, right? You need to take heed to that anointing. You need to take heed to his Holy Spirit, right? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 My God is doing so many, so many good and blessed things, you guys. So many good and blessed things. My God is awesome. He can move a mountain. Keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, today I am forgiven. His grace is why I'm living, praise His holy name. My God is awesome. Awesome. You guys, the Lord is saying he wants everyone to sing. He needs the entire body of Christ to sing. Stop feeling excluded. Stop shrinking yourself. Stop counting yourself out. I love you guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.